then you can play Dom Team Death, the free for all, CTF and sabotage. Man, I play them all from search up to headquarters, down the list of demolition. Objectively speaking, to win is my only mission. If I sin, it's not by omission of all. Hey YouTubers, I'm Hardcore Gamer for Life, and once again, this commentary is not about the gameplay. In this commentary, I'm going to pick up where we left off on the last one. So again, we're talking about this, our Call of Duty YouTube community. If you haven't seen my last video, you might want to give it a watch before viewing this one. If you click the link on the top right hand corner of your screen, it'll pause this video and open that one up in a separate window so you can come right back to this one when you're done. So, in my previous video, I was responding to a video that Quake Beats, a machinima director, had made called We Don't Appreciate Call of Duty Enough. And since I've been having some thoughts parallel to that subject, I voiced them in a response video. I talked about Infinity Ward losing most of their lead programmers and having to bring in two other studios due to their being so short-staffed, and that despite that, the game actually turned out quite good, in my opinion, as far as Call of Duty games go talked most importantly of all about the recent trend of an extreme lack of positivity in the community and it's my belief that the community is tearing itself apart far more than any changes to or problems with the game and I got an amazing response from that video it really seemed to resonate with folks and what that stems from is I think it just seems the modus operandi for a lot of commentators lately has been get a gameplay record yourself bitching over it for five to ten minutes and BAM you got a commentary but okay I've already taken the community to task here. That's not what this video is going to be about. That was just a recap. We've already discussed the situation. Now I figure we should talk about some positive steps we can take in the right direction. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to act like I've got all the answers here. But at the same time, I wouldn't feel right making a video saying this, this, and that is wrong with the community and then be like, alright guys, go figure it out for yourselves. <laughs> so I'm going to make a few suggestions, both to the commentators and to those who are just viewers. And please remember guys, this is an open forum. Attend to the 22-way street, as it were. And if you guys have any suggestions for me, or most importantly for the community at large, don't hesitate to share them in the comment section. So, for starters, suggestion number one, and this goes out to the content creators within the community. We need to be more energetic, creative, funny, thought-provoking, instructive, whatever it is that we do or bring to the table that's unique about us, we've got to emphasize that. As much as we love our favorite commentators and YouTubers, we should only be influenced by them, not try to directly imitate them. As more and more people aspire to become successful YouTubers, it becomes more and more critical for someone who desires success at it to be doing something so uniquely, or so well, or both, that it makes you really stand apart from the crowd. Reach deep into yourself, and you may be surprised how creative and intelligent you can be and that goes for commentators musical content creators montage makers gfx guys you know anyone who participates in this community as a content creator don't post half-assed content guys especially with the glut of content these days there's really no point if you don't bother to bring your a game don't bother Secondly, and this is something I'm guilty of slacking on myself, we need to realize that making a great video is only half the battle, and that when you're a small channel on YouTube these days, the other half, namely getting views, doesn't just magically happen. We have sophisticated social networking platforms available to us today at no cost, like Twitter, Facebook, and others. As long as you are satisfied that the quality of your content is up to par, you should have no qualms about asking some of the medium to large commentators you follow for a retweet now and then, or to post a video response if someone does a video on a topic that you'd like to expand further upon. And you never know, that person might actually check out your video and really like it and give you a shout out. But if you don't get your stuff out there, odds are no one's going to come knocking down your door. So we need to become better networkers, rather than doing things like spamming the comment sections of large channels with ads for your channel. Those of you that do this, I understand your motives, but it's completely counterproductive to what you're trying to accomplish here. If you're truly serious about succeeding on YouTube, your time would be much better spent posting to community channels and learning how to network properly. Now for suggestion number three, and one of the most important things we can do to help provide the community, in my opinion, is give feedback. I'm not talking just giving feedback once in a while or just when a video is really amazing. If you took the time to click the like button, or the dislike button for that matter, leave a comment, even if it's a brief one, telling that person why. Be sure it's in a constructive fashion if it's criticism, like Mama said, if you can't say anything nice. You see... I don't really think there's as large a preponderance of non-positive people on YouTube as the comment section would make it seem. 
I just think that those are the ones that squawk the loudest. In fact, we know they're not as populous as they would seem simply for the well-known fact that most of them create multiple accounts to perpetuate their petty ends. And I think the average YouTuber has gotten perhaps a bit disgusted by this trend and are offering less and less feedback. So my suggestion is let's do just the opposite and post more often and more detailed feedback. And rather than waste our time indulging those who wish to engage in flame wars, we need simply to intelligently point out the invariable idiocy of the statements they come commonly make. Remember, they want a hateful emotional response. That's what they're going for. But most of them don't have the mental muscle to deal with an actual intelligent response. When we respond back to them in the fashion they address us, that's like fighting fire with gasoline. We need to respond intelligently and point out the sheer absurdity and idiocy that is the hallmark of this small but very vocal portion of the community. That's like fighting fire with water. And the more of us that become strong feedback providers and comment section firefighters, the more we can put the unity back in community. And that's not to say that we all have to agree on everything by any means. I realize that everyone within this community has their own opinions on a variety of subjects, and I recognize and respect every one of those opinions that also has respect for the opinions of others as well. If you think Modern Warfare 3 is unplayable crap, fine, don't play it. But don't be that guy in the comments saying Modern Warfare 3 is garbage and you haven't played it for weeks and that anyone that does still play it is an idiot, yada yada. I mean, really? What are you even doing watching Modern Warfare 3 videos still? Go find a game you'll actually enjoy playing. And on that note, I've been seeing more and more YouTubers, and some relatively big ones too, saying that they're not going to play Modern Warfare 3 anymore. I saw a video earlier from Pone Star for Hire who made his feelings crystal clear by destroying his copy of the game on camera. And another, less dramatic one from Fluxus of S&D for Dummies, where he didn't say that he wouldn't play the game at all henceforth, and didn't even go so far as to call it a bad game, but that just that he was extremely bored with the game and wanted to take a break on tips and strategies videos, either until his interest returned or till Black Ops 2, whichever comes first. He'll still post gameplay commentaries, which will mostly be other people's gameplay until he gets back into the swing of it. And to be fair to both of them, they both repeatedly stated that they totally respect the opinions of those of us still enjoying the game, They just aren't anymore, so they need to take a break, and I respect that. Some are not managing their exits with as much grace as these guys. I'm not going to name any names here, but these guys are far from the only commentators stepping down, as it were, from the Modern Warfare 3 commentary scene. But, as you might have deduced from the content of the last video and this one, I am not one of those commentators. And I think that to those of us that are still enjoying this game, the fact that many commentators have chosen to either cut down on Modern Warfare 3 content or eliminate it altogether opens up a window of opportunity for those of us who can bring original, entertaining content promote it properly through social networking, and make good use of feedback to tailor our content to our audience. And for those of us who like to watch, viewers, you and your feedback are the lifeblood of this community. Remember to always be that shining light in the comment section, and watch as the trolls scurry to the darkness like roaches. So, I've enjoyed articulating my thoughts on the community as of late, and I hope you guys have enjoyed it as well. But at the same time, I'm ready to get back to doing my usual variety of content, which for the benefit of those of you that are new to the channel, consists of live comms, standard gameplay commentaries where I talk mostly about the gameplay, but usually touch briefly on a secondary topic at some point in the comm, a full-fledged Call of Duty parody of an ESPN broadcast, complete with things like stat overlays and instant replays, featuring gameplay from both myself and my subscribers, a type of video I call the Gameplay Instrumental, where I set original music that I compose and perform myself to a quickie gameplay and much more. I've got it all organized into playlists on my channel. Feel free to go check it out. So guys, I thank you for your indulgence. Hopefully you found this video useful or at least thought provoking. I look forward to seeing your feedback on that in the comment section and I look forward to working with you guys toward the goal of making this community what we know it can be. As always, this is Hardcore Gamer for Life. Thank you so much for viewing. Please rate, comment, and if you enjoyed it, consider hitting that subscribe button. Free is a wonderful price, baby. Peace. Have a great one. Keep it on the dial way you know that it's hot. Cause you know that on my channel I upload a lot of videos of all different types of varieties. Game plays many tasha's live comms, defense and comedy bits. Ain't no playlist titled greatest hits, not yet, but you can bet.